So now we look at the units of measurement and that is when we want to make a measurement we need to have some units and these units were developed independently all around the world uh, by every country every civilization had their own system of units especially of uh, length and area mass and time because they needed to make buildings and, and land holdings so they needed units for area and for length for the same reason and mass for the for purchasing and selling and buying and then also of course of time but the problem with here was that every because they all developed independently of each other there was a large number of different systems of units and they were all different even within the same country the same unit for example the ounce there are 12 different kinds of ounces being used in England even within London, they had different kinds of ounces. And as an example, in uh, the unit of mass, which is a seer, and it's used, uh, uh, it, well, now it's obsolete because we've gone to the international system. But in uh, within India, the, the, the official seer was 1.25 kilograms, but even 10 and 9 kilograms for one seer were being used in different towns. In Pakistan, it is 0.933 kilograms. In Afghanistan, it's 7 kilograms. So the same term in different countries had different meanings, and the same term within the same country had different meanings, same as the ounce, uh, and same as the yard. So many other things, they, they were all sort of uh, independently developed in different parts of the same country or different parts of even the same uh, region of a country. A second problem, so that was one problem, that each system had, that each unit had different values. A second was that when we go from smaller to larger units, then uh, the conversion was somewhat cumbersome. So we have 12 inches to a foot, three feet to a yard, and 220 yards to a furlong, and then eight furlongs to a mile. Now, uh, well, it's uh, sort of difficult to remember those sometimes. And during the, another reason for this was that the yard was defined by the King of England. So he would stand up with his arm outstretched and he said the distance from his nose to the tip of his finger is one yard. So that's how the yard was defined. And uh, well, the King of England is no longer there. So we don't know if we're still in the same yard. So what the during the French Revolution, there were some French people who thought that instead of defining like this, and well, the foot also was the foot of a French king. Okay, so he put his foot on the table and said, okay, measure this length, and that is one foot. So they, they thought that it should be based on the earths, on the earth, something to do with nature rather than people. And also that the larger units should be multiples of 10 of the smaller units. So, so things like that would no longer be there. And that resulted in the meter kilogram second system, also known as the MKS system. This system was uh, improved and adopted later on over time and then in 1960 it was adopted as the SI or the international system by the whole world and now slowly over a period of a few years or several years every country of the world just let go of their older units and converted to the SI system and so that is the system being used all over the world the SI not this one well they are almost the same but they are different and in this course, of course, we will also use the SI system. Now, the basis for selecting the units, what would be the, uh, the length of a meter? What would be uh, like a second and so on? So the, dis the basis was that they should be readily accessible. You should be able to verify. So like the King of England is no longer there. So it's completely inaccessible and it could be measured reliably and does not change with time. Okay, so all these three things should, 
every unit that we select should have these three things. And based on that, the definitions were made. The earlier definitions were uh, the unit of length, which is a meter, was defined initially by the French uh, around their, their revolution uh, when the meter was initially made as a 10 millionth of the distance from the equator to the North Pole. So if that's the Earth and that's the equator, the North Pole and the South Pole, well, you go along one of the meridians and then this would be uh, from here to here would be 10 million meters. And based on that, they decided what would be the length of one meter. It comes out to be a little bit bigger than a yard. But then uh, we want, they wanted something that's more fundamental than the earth. So it was defined as so many wavelengths of the orange red light from Krypton 86. Now, if you take the atom of Krypton, so here's the nucleus and then you have the electrons around it, a large number of shells. And when you heat the electrons, or you, when you heat the, the Krypton, the electrons go to a higher energy level and then they come down back to the same level. And when they come down, they emit a certain wavelength. So Krypton emits a very specific wavelength which is orangish reddish color and has so many uh, so many wavelengths of that particular light made up one meter but now it's changed and now the, the definition is that it's the distance traveled by light in a vacuum in one over uh, this much of a second which means essentially that we need a definition of the second so let's go further uh, mass uh, the unit is a kilogram, which is based on a cylinder that's kept in Paris, which is the primary standard. And then there are secondary standards. Copies of that were made and distributed around the world. It's based on that the mass of a centimeter cube of water is equal to one gram at uh, four degrees C. So that much quantity of water, a uh, cubic centimeter of water uh, at a four degrees Celsius would be exactly one gram. And so multiplying by a thousand, you make a kilogram and you make a cylinder and say, okay, that's the standard kilogram. Now the unit of time, which we also need for here, initially they took it as, uh, well, an, a day has 24 hours, each hour has 60 minutes, each minute has 60 seconds. So there are so many seconds in an average day. So, so many seconds in one mean solar day of the year 1900 that was taken as the duration of one second. That one second should be such that one day would have so many seconds. But uh, the Earth does not take exactly the same amount of time in making one revolution or going around the sun. There's a very small minor difference, which is about a second sometimes, plus or a minus. So now the second is defined in this way that it's so many, like 9.12 10 to the power 9 periods of radiation from a cesium-133 atom. And here again, it's something similar to, to what happened here in Krypton. But in this case, cesium atom has a nucleus and it has electrons going around it. And in the last shell, there is one electron Okay, there are many shells in here. The last shell has one electron and it has a certain spin, which is a half. And the nucleus has a certain spin. And because of that, uh, there's a, um, a hyperfine splitting. Before that, let's say, well, when you heat it, it goes to the next energy level. Let's say that's here. It would go up here and come down and emit a certain wavelength. But because of the interaction of the electronic spin and the nuclear spin, there's another energy level that's very, very close to it. Okay, the difference between these two levels is very, very small. That's why it's called the hyperfine splitting or hyperfine uh, different levels. And then the electron can go from this level to the upper level and then that being an, uh, unstable. It'll come down back to the same level and here it would emit 
a very specific wavelength and that so many periods that is uh, uh, in one second so many uh, let's say crests would cross a certain point and that time in which that happened would be taken as one second well there are atomic clocks that do this that measure this time so that's now the definition of one second now the second thing that the French did was uh, to have everything to the power of 10 so instead of having three meters to something else or something like that so we have uh, prefixes are in powers of 10 so it could be multiples of 10 or it could divide it by 10 and each prefix of course has a name so for example a kilo is 10 to the power 3 a kilo simply means 1000 the abbreviation is a lowercase k so when you you use the kilo with a, a meter it becomes a kilo meter or a kilometer that the kilo would convert into 1000 and the meter would be a meter so a kilometer or a kilometer would be 1000 meter uh, now the milli is 1 over 1000 so it's 10 to minus 3 and the abbreviation is m so a milli times a meter would be a millimeter would be 1 over a thousand of a meter or it would be so much 10 to minus 3 meter now this abbreviation kilo can be attached to almost anything else which or well, can be attached to every other unit so when we attach it to a gram become the kilogram attach it to a meter become the kilometer a kilosecond would be a thousand seconds kilobytes kilotons joules kilonewtons you could just have any unit over here and a k with it would mean this becomes 1000 newtons and similarly for the milli we could have a milligram millimeter and so on so the gram is g same as here mg becomes milligram and kg becomes kilogram and a millimeter becomes mm now this might be confusing because the first one is the prefix and here milli means one over a thousand and the second is the unit which is a gram and similarly this is a milli and this m is a meter and then we have milliseconds millijoules and so on but we don't normally use millibytes or uh, millitons so they're not often used so this is only for a thousand and one over a thousand now if we have a number like 4.5 km so it's 4.5 kilometers so k for the kilo and m for the meter or you can simply say 4500 meters now we have a whole list uh, of these so kilo is a thousand mega would be um 10 to the power 6 so it's a million a giga would be 10 to the power 9 at terra is 10 to the power 12 beta and it keeps on going and then on the smaller side we have the deci which is one tenth a centi which is one over 100 milli micro nano and it keeps on going well they all have their symbols and uh, the symbols for centi the c for milli is a little m micro is a mu and nano is an n pico is p f and so on and for a mega well milli is little m mega is capital m and giga would be a capital g and a t and then we'll be have this is a lowercase k okay so you need to remember these just check out in the book you can have the whole list over there and uh, don't mix up a capital and a small m uh, also don't write a kilo with a capital k okay because it's always used as a lowercase k m as a kilometer and this would be a millimeter and this would be a megameter something we don't often use but that's what it would be now we have um, fundamental units and we have derived units so the three uh, units mass 
length, and time are the fundamental units in the SI system. So we have the kilogram as the mass, the meter as the length, and time as the second. In the US customary system, which is still in use in, in the US, we have not converted to SI as the rest of the world has done. The unit of mass is a slug. Well, what is that thing? A unit of length is a foot, and the unit of time is a second. Okay, that's a typo. So unit of time is a second. Now, a slug is a unit of mass that we normally don't use. It's, um, uh, or, but it's needed for, for this uh, system. Now, these are the, the basic units and all other units of mechanics, especially, are some combination of these three. So for example, area is a square meter. So it's meter squared. A volume would be a meter cubed. A density is mass per unit volume. So it's a mass unit over a volume unit. So it's a kilogram over cubic meter. A speed is how far you travel in some time, like miles per hour or meters per second. So it's a meter divided by a second. So these are all derived units. So you have the fundamental and the derived. Well, in principle, you could make any of these as the fundamental unit and make the length as a derived unit, but that would make the equation very complicated. But in principle, you can do that, but no advantage in doing that at all. We now want to convert the units from uh, one set of system to another. So we need some conversion factors. So one mile is 1,609 meters or 1.609 kilometers. A foot is uh, 0.3048 and so on. So we have these units. Now this is a, a, an exact conversion. <coughs> now let's take an example. We want to convert 15 inches into centimeters. So we know that one inch is 2.54 uh, centimeters. So 15 would just multiply both sides by 15 and get the answer. But we need a sort of a basis for that. And the basis is that if you take one inch is 2.54 centimeters, if you divide this side with one inch, and you divide this side with one inch, which is something you can do, you can divide both sides of an equation with the same uh, term then this inch would cancel with an inch and one over one is simply a one. And on this side, we get 2.54 centimeters over an inch, so that is equal to one without any units. Now, one, the number one is called the mathematical identity. And a mathematical identity so identity. A mathematical identity is something that you can multiply anything with and it doesn't change anything. So if you have any quantity x you multiply with one, it still remains the same quantity. So one is a mathematical identity and it can be applied. You, so you, and this is equal to one. So you can multiply this term to anything and it doesn't make any difference. So we take the 15 inches and we multiply with one. And so it still remains 15 inches. And now we can cancel out the inch because these symbols for these uh, units act like algebraic quantities so you can cancel them out and so 15 times 2.54 become 38.1 and the unit left is only centimeters and so that's your answer now as another example you convert 15 cubic inches to cubic centimeters okay that was just 15 inch so that was just a length this is 15 cubic uh, cubic inches so it's like well, it doesn't have to be like this. It could be a cylinder 
or it could be even an irregular shape. But the volume is 15 cubic inches and we want to convert to cubic centimeters. So we write the first term and we multiply with one. Okay, that's the same one as what we had up here. And then we multiply it. and now we can cancel out the inch, but these are three. This is inch, inch, inch. So it cancels out only one of them. So we need to multiply it again. And this time it cancels out one more and we need to multiply it again and it cancels out the last one and now it's gone. And so now the inch cube is gone and we have three centimeters so it becomes centimeter cube. And multiplying them gives us this big number which we should round up to 2.46. And as a last example, we look at convert 60 miles per hour to meters per second. So we want to convert the miles into meters and the hour into seconds. So we write 60 miles per hour, we multiply with this, which is one, 1609 miles per meters per mile. So, so many meters is one mile, so it's just one. And one hour has 3600 seconds and now we can cancel out the mile with the mile and the hour with the hour and we're left with the meter and the second and so we get so many meters per second which we round to 26.8 meters per second so what you need to be careful about is that whenever you have a cubed or a square you need to convert it that many times whatever is this power and that's something that's, that a lot of people make a mistake in. So just be careful about that.